Hi, Dr. Tom Anderson here with my lovely wife. And I'm Dr. Maureen Anderson. Very and we're excited. so excited about yes. today. God really spoke to my heart just lately about the word he gave us when we first moved out here at 30 years old. I was, and you were 32. And anyway, but all of our friends and in the church we went to and that was, was very legalistic. Everything was sin except eating. But when we came out here, God spoke to us right away and said, Seek my prosperity for the sake of the house of the Lord. And so the scriptures here, as you know, sometimes I say it a little bit backwards, but it says, For the sake of the house of the Lord my God, seek my prosperity. And that was out of the NIV. God spoke that, that to our, our hearts. Uh, uh, Psalms 122, 9. nine okay? That's right. So, Anyway, we began that journey here, and we, we got to read Kenneth Copeland's books, Kenneth Hagen. We read uh, uh, all the different Charles Capps, all these wonderful faith books that were setting us free. And so out of that, we right away, you know, learned about your confession. We, we made tapes of the, the scriptures. We carried them wherever we went. We spoke them all the time because we had a project God had called us to do. We didn't know we were going to build a church one we day. We did, did not know No, that. $22 million church. Hallelujah. But God knew. But God just spoke to my heart a couple of days ago. That word, we received it way back, way back when I was 30 years old. And God has now growing that that word in That's us, true. rain the word, yes. and, and getting us to have a passion for people to come out of poverty and to now come into the wealth that the kingdom has, that it's a time for transfer of wealth from the sinner to hand it over to us Christians to expand the kingdom worldwide. And so God has called us to do that. And, uh, and that we talked about, I'm just going to say it again, the love of money is the root of all evil, all right? But the other side is when you uh, care about others and you see your brother in need, and if you shut up your heart to him, where is the love of God in that? So we, we realize that, get, that financially building orphanages and taking care of widows and helping those that can't Truly pay the rent. Truly helping people isn't and just saying, I'll people pray for you. And building kingdom. That's right, building. That is now a voice of God's love to them. That's right. That though you give it to them, God has put that on your heart and you have it to give. Hallelujah. They give God the glory. Blessed so, to be a blessing. Yes. So this is a, well, you know, testimony here was when God spoke to our heart uh, almost a year ago now said, you're not getting the full benefit of your giving and it's all by faith and we're to meditate day and night in nightly in uh, uh, the benefits of the, give, give, the kingdom of God so that we can expand to have more to give. Didn't know we were going to go through a virus at the time. But anyway, we began to do that. We began to talk to our partners and people about meditating on the benefits of their giving to see the, the multiplication coming to them because of faith to build a kingdom. Well, we had one of them that her husband had lost his job and things didn't look great. But as she began to meditate, she woke up one morning and the God, sa God said to her, what happened to that that bond that was given to you that became, became a stock? She realized it became a stock. She forgot all about it. She went looking for it. She found it. And then she called the company and she found out that it was worth over a million dollars. And uh, that transfer of wealth to her. It didn't get to her because she had gotten married and had a different name. And so this is what God does. The wealth of the wicked is laid up they for the just, the Amen. Bible says. The Bible says. You never says, know exactly where it's going to come from sometimes. That's yeah, the truth. And that the kingdom is built on faith. When we go through the, the newborn experience, we are responsible. What we meditate on, what we say, and out of that responsibility, our responsibility is to walk by faith uh, and to watch what we say and to think the right thoughts to meditate on the word and pursue what God has said in our Prosperity life. I am responsible for my life. Right. And God says, I will make my way rich and prosperous and successful 
if I meditate on the word daily and nightly and do what it says. There's a doing too. That's true. Yep, you have to be a doer. Maturing in, in, uh, from a teenager to an adult, maturing as a born, born again Christian and, mm. and growing yes. up in the Lord, everything <laughs> is connected to the ability yeah. to give. To give. You're not able to give until you become mature. Kind of yes. mature in the word. Amen. Very powerful. So it's the right attitude towards giving what it's going to do for you, what it does for others. And you know, our children also inherit, you know, there's an inheritance that we pass on to them. And so in seeing our one son, he wrote the book, Think Like a Billionaire, and uh, that God gave him. And now he's, he's one of the pastors of this church. Both of our sons co-lead together with their wives of the church now as we're building a new ministry. And, uh, and anyway... During the, this pandemic, he's making so much money because he thinks, he says all the right words, he's meditating on the wealth that God says he has for him and to expand the kingdom worldwide. He has his own business now and makes up to a million dollars a month. Uh, gross, just, yeah, gross, exactly. just in the business itself. So praise God. And so he just always says, I mean, even when negative things happen in his life, and sometimes they're kind of overwhelming oh, man, what's going on. A, Everything goes, seems it. to go wrong, you know, in a season. And I go, oh my goodness, honey, you're having a bad day. He goes, mom, I never have bad days. He so said, no, God's good to me all the time. And so, so we see his confession, his thought life, we see it happening in his life. Hallelujah. Absolutely. That's the truth. So and I want to oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 no. Scripture or two. I, no, I was you, just going to talk ahead. a little bit you about attitude. He has the kind of attitude or an attitude of wealth. And you really have to develop an attitude towards wealth. Yes. I, I came out of tremendous poverty in my own life from a tar paper shack and whatever. Uh, and I wanted to get out of that. And so I worked hard. I had the attitude that if I worked hard, I'll become wealthy. But I found out that it wasn't only work hard, but it was work smart. I had to get financially literate. I had to develop an idea and, and well, an attitude you... until I actually believed that I could be wealthy and that God wanted me wealthy. I had to change that whole thing in my yeah, heart. Yeah. Well, God gave you that word. Seek, right? Right? For the sake of the house of the Lord my God, seek my prosperity. Yeah. When he gave you that word, that was the beginning of you coming out of poverty because you had to break that spirit of poverty on your life. Right, and, exactly. But that's the call of God on our life is that word that put in us is to now grow and develop that we have the power of God to bring others out of poverty by the, the growth of that word. That's that the grows purpose for this our, program that you're yeah, watching right bringing now. You out How do we get this information to you, not just to your head, but get it to your heart so you can develop the right attitude towards wealth that God does want you yeah. prosperous. God the does attitude. want you to have wealth. He wants you to share in all of the goodness that he has for you, yeah. but also have so much that you're able to consistently give with a very cheerful heart to help others, to build the kingdom yes, of God, yes. to help your church, yes. pay off church, just so many things that our money is needed <gasps> Remember for. that time when we're building the church and we're coming out of the poverty, meditating on that. You know, God changes us little by little. And anyway, we That's were, the, you know, the, the economy just fell and... Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, we were, we were in need. The church was in need of financial help because the church lives off of God putting it in the hearts of people, giving their tithes and love offerings. But if they don't have it, how does that happen? And uh, Jesse Duplantis came. He came every year. He, he, he never all expenses. Yeah, he never charged the church a dime. And thank you, Jesse. And he came and he gave us a powerful word and... And anyway, he came and he said, you know, I'm going to receive the offering tonight. And I feel led of God. Now, we didn't say one word to him about we it. We were in even. dire straits putting that we didn't tell, on. Yeah. We didn't tell him about it. He said, and we were having this big faith explosion going on also that costs a lot. And anyway, he said, God just put on my heart, uh, I'm going to take up your love offering and give you the whole thing tonight. Well, he didn't know. We were so excited he didn't know. But God put that in his heart. 
This is actually sixty thousand dollars, and it's exactly yeah. what we need. Yeah, he gave us sixty thousand dollars to pay for the conference, and uh, praise God. But we gave God the glory. God you know? gets the glory. Yes, we're not but smart these, enough. But he had the money to be able to fly his jet here, to be able to do the meeting and and not charge us a dime, and then to take up the offering and give it all. So he not only gave that much, but he paid for the fuel the for his airplane and for all the people that came with him. So so this is, he had an attitude of wealth. Attitude creates an atmosphere. That's one of the things that we could talk about for a little bit. Just the atmosphere. I, I remember as a young Christian working in the world and and uh, becoming home to my wife and, and we're in here and, and my kids and and I, I realized that I had to, what I was going to bring into the house was going to impact how the evening went. And that I had to have a joyful, giving attitude, not a tired attitude. They had to come in Amen. with a sense of joy Amen. and had to come in with a sense that. of giving to my wife and then giving to my kids. And as a result, it developed a kind of happy at, at atmosphere in the home. We create Amen. We do. the atmosphere around us. I always think about Charlie brown and, and pig pen <laughs> in the drawing about the, the little kid that had a negative attitude towards life and he had a cloud of dust and dirt that always surrounded him wherever he walked and wherever he went and there are people that are like that and, and they can actually pull you into that dust and dirt and, and get you and and change and affect your yeah, attitude that's right an that's attitude right. of pr prosperity <laughs> yes. the attitude against prosperity has been out there for centuries and it's been written in the books that, well, that's not God and that Jesus was poor and all the attitudes that are developed into Christians that it's okay to well, be mediocre. And the enemy wants them to have that attitude. Yes. Because then they can't advance the kingdom. They, you know. The devil wants them to have yeah, that attitude. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but we have to realize that uh, God wants his kingdom to go forth worldwide. He wants people to know that he cares and he brings extra finances. You know, as we started the program this year about getting the full benefits of the your giving and being able oh, yes. to have a heart to build the kingdom and meditate on your giving day and nightly and see the expansion of it worldwide, your finances to build the kingdom and seek first his expansion worldwide, the kingdom, exactly right. and his righteousness and all those other things will be added on to you. Well, one of our staff people, uh, they began to, they wanted to be a plant in the earth. They wanted to be an investor. And so they began to, to stand on their giving and seeing that and supernaturally uh, a company that uh, she had invested in. Uh, um, anyway, they contacted her. She did not know it. And they had all this this money to give her. And out of that money, she was able to invest. And she had so much left over. And so she she began to see it. And then God moved on her, on her husband. He had retired. And doors are opening up for him that we were believing and seeing for wealth to come into their family and 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 supernatural ways. We're seeing supernatural wealth coming to the team as they're meditating on exactly the benefit right. of wealth. Oh my goodness. So it is just tied to the things that God has showed us that He yeah. wants us to share with you to give you the opportunity to live outside of the wilderness and come into the promises of God. God has so much laid up ready for us to receive if we would just believe Him for it. God has so much that he wants to do through us. And so he wants to get money to us, but he also wants to get money through us so that we can make a difference for having love. I know and, it. And oh change my gosh. something do you want in, me to this, read these scriptures? in this world. Yes. I was thinking about when we were over to Italy and God was having us teach about becoming a millionaire God's way. Oh my goodness. The people, every other word, they were clapping and shouting. They were standing up yes, and shouting because they never heard Wanting to come heard out like of it. the poverty that they had been living in and realizing God wanted them to be wealthy. Oh, my goodness. It was such an exciting, so anointed. It was just God moved in miracles. Miracles Absolutely happened right. in that meeting. But a, this, here it says attitudes. This is by, by a millionaire book that uh, is a workbook that goes with the This is with a the workbook book. with the Anyway. Books. 
It is attitudes have their roots in words and their power in action. So I want you to think about that for just a moment because you're about to read some of the word I know of God. It. They have, my attitude towards wealth was I grew up dirt poor, going back to 1804, looking at my family tree, everybody was hog farmers and dirt poor. So it had been built into my DNA oh, for poverty. And so my attitude was poverty, but my desire was to get out of it. And it was so strong in and your so life. And so I had to poverty. start speaking what God said in His yes. word. Jesus became poor and that thinking. I may be made rich. I had to begin to say, I'm the head and not the tail, and above and not beneath. I had to, I had to speak it out and reprogram because yeah. the power was in the word of God yeah. that could change my heart and perception yeah. of life and develop an attitude of wealth. And one day after I, I did this for almost a year, didn't I? I know. <laughs> There's a lot to get out of me. But at the end of that yeah, yeah. year, I remember having Maureen pray for me and, and the whole power of a negative left lifted. And I realized that I, and this may sound prideful, but this is what I realized in my own heart, that I could do anything and be successful in Christ. I, in I, Christ. In there was Christ. never, no, no longer ever a doubt that I can't be wealthy. There's never... Nothing happens inside of me no. to think poverty at all. No, nothing. I enough. only think too much. I only think about ways to ideas and witty ideas that God gives me to make money to continually advance the kingdom yeah. and been and able you, to give millions into the kingdom now. Yes, you years. have been. Millions and millions we have been able to build, give into the kingdom. But what's so exciting about Tell this it. too is that our, we see our sons and our grandchildren now uh, uh, have that wealth attitude that God wants you wealthy. And so what they think, their attitude, is what they produce in life. Oh, my goodness. So that they can expand the kingdom they, and see God as a good God all the time. That's what they see. But anyway, these are some scriptures that we wrote down. I want to go over the word now of these scriptures that it says this. Remember the Lord your God. For it is he who has given you the ability to produce wealth. So he wants you to produce wealth. He gives you that ability. And you know, remember, when you were just young in the Lord, God gave you this word. So there's such a call of God up for us to wealth, bring yeah. people out of poverty. And God said to you, you were maybe a year in the Lord. He said, one day mm -hmm. he said to you, if you would meditate on my word day and night, I will uh, you, I will make you wealthy. Is that make what he you said? rich. He actually I will, used the word rich. I didn't even know that scripture was close to. No, you didn't know anything about that yet. Oh. And he said, I, I don't. I think he said, if you meditate day and night in my word, you will be rich. Yeah. You will be rich because we know we make ourselves rich by the word. When we agree with the What's word, this thing? it it's says this we thing. will do that. The words that we say, and then action. Yeah. So once we build it in us, you have. To, Faith without works it. is dead. So you have to develop the faith for it, the attitude for it, and then the action to bring it about. Oh, my goodness. You have to become a doer of what it is you yeah. believe. Yeah. So anyway, so this is it. He says, and he'll give you the ability, he has a covenant with you, to produce wealth. So confirming his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as of today. Another scripture. I won't say them all, but there's so many. And wisdom and wealth has as far exceeded the report that is said about us, right? Indeed, not even half of what has been told to others. Ooh, oh, my that's goodness. Good. And then that's this really one, good. I know. Uh, this is Psalms 112.3. I should be reading the reference. But anyway, wealth and riches are in your house. That's Start the saying says. it. Start saying wealth it. Wealth and Start riches speaking. are in my house because God speaking. said so. Then this scripture says, I have wisdom, and with wisdom uh, are riches and honor and enduring wealth and prosperity. Oh, my goodness, look at that. Here's another one, okay. God bestows wealth on me because I love him, and he makes my treasures full. Another one here, the blessings of the Lord brings me wealth, mm. and he adds no sorrow to it. Another one says, I feed on the wealth of nations. Feed on it. And in their riches, I boast. Oh, my God. It's goodness. awesome, isn't it? Here's, here's another okay. one because 
many times we're not even consciously aware of our own attitude towards wealth. I know it. This will help you. The Holy Spirit will tell you. The simple statement will help you identify where you are concerning wealth. This is what it says. Attitudes are never content until expressed. You understand that? The bad attitude will always come out. If there's a bad attitude or a good attitude, you can check by listening to your words. Tie a tape recorder to yourself somewhere and just listen to yourself all day long. Let the Holy Spirit reveal Amen. what That's comes true. out of your mouth. Oh, I can't afford it. Oh, I, I will never be able to get that. Oh, we can't have the big screen TV. Oh, we can't, we can't buy clothes right now. We got you know, All kinds of things that come out of our or mouth. Or we can say, oh, I can't tithe now. I can't tithe. Yeah, I can't. Oh, oh no. Don't here. ever not give your tithe. Oh, my goodness. That is what protects what you have, and it is what will produce fruit in your life. That's the Multiplication truth. Yeah. In, in your life. And so I, so I, you I, give your Just way. listen to your mouth and find out what your attitude is. And, and then if you find your attitude is not good, begin to work on saying what is good and what you are expecting and what God's Word says about it. And that's what you're reading to them right here. Yeah. And you can actually get these. I think we sent them out free if you if you want one. But anyway. You got a call you, or you got to uh, notify us so we can. Yes, absolutely. Hallelujah. And, uh, but also, if you can't, you can't afford, if you're having a hard struggle, we will also give things freely to you. I mean, we don't want to ever withhold the word from you. Never, never, never. never. So, but uh, when you do call <laughs> and you say, I can't, uh, uh, we will bless you with what you need, but you need to become a partner with the ministry. Yeah, then we'll let the anointing come on you. The word for winners. Is, the territory that we take and you get if you, you become get partners. Freely. That's exactly yes. right. When we freely receive, we yeah. freely give. So, so here, here it is. It's a mother. Uh, I am good, and I have left an inheritance to my children's children. Now, I, I know this is written in first person to help you to identify. And the well, and the sinner's wealth is laid up for me, the righteous. Stored up for me, the righteous. So the sinner's wealth is being stored up to give to me, the righteous. Exactly. Hallelujah. Amen. You, right. Okay, I please God. So God gives me wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives a task of gathering the wealth that, and storing it up to hand it over to me that pleases the Lord. Oh, my goodness. There it is. Transfer of great wealth. There's enough of sinners using wealth for evil things. It's time for them to hand it over. Amen. Yes. Attitude is Money either your covered. best friend or your worst enemy. Okay, talk about it. Talk about it. I mean, just the attitude in your heart can become your best friend because it'll start building your life and your future tomorrow or it can be your worst enemy and continue to tear you down into greater and greater poverty, greater and greater, I mean, bad, worse health, steal your joy, steal your favor. I mean, yeah. just the negative words of your mouth can take you down a road of destruction. Yeah. That's well, you think of John Maxwell. What did he say? Your attitude is your key to success. It is your attitude. It's yeah. key to success. Absolutely. It's more honest and more consistent than our words because people can say with their mind certain things and, and, and confess certain things, but with their mind. You don't want to do it with your mind and your mouth. You want to do it with your heart and your mouth because all the power of belief, all the power of faith operates from your heart not because you heard somebody say it and you're trying to say it with your head. It has to become part Amen. of your heart. Amen. It becomes Amen. part of your heart by the meditation Amen. process Amen. of meditating Amen. until finally Praise it gets God. to your heart. Yes, that's it truth. starts in your head, yes. but get it to your heart. Well, I tried that in November for three weeks. Well, try it for a year if you got to. Whatever do it's it. going to do to change your heart. Get yeah. the Word of God to well, work in your heart. Don't throw, don't throw, throw it out. That's right. The Bible says... You know, don't become weary in well-doing. Keep it up because if you faint not, you will reap the harvest. So God can't lie. It's impossible for God to lie. So what his word says is yours. But you have to bind yourself to what the word says. You have to believe God's word. You have to agree with it. You need to use your authority to confess it. God's already given it to you. He just needs you to sign the ticket, you know. It's like it's already in the bank bank account in heaven, supernaturally. That's right. 
And so now you need to now draw it out. Do, say, money cometh to me. I'm drawing out of my bank account. I'm agreeing with God that great wealth is mine because I've been called to expand the kingdom. And I need to have the wealth to do it. Praise Atti God. Atti attitude will either draw people to you or drive people away from you. That's the truth. So think about that. In other words, for any so form of success, typically, Amen. it takes a team. Amen. And you will never build a team with a negative attitude. You can no. only build a team to accomplish God's will well, with the power of a team. And your attitude is what draws people to you. That's the truth. And I was thinking of this. Uh, I think it's Thessalonians 4. Now, don't hold me to it. I'm just saying. It's that probably it, close. Close. Okay, that says, okay, I think it's verse 17. I like it when you hold my hand. Do you like it? Yeah, I love I to hold okay. your hand. But anyway, that grace, that gra the grace is eternal encouragement. That's and what that's it what it is. So it's eternal. When we step into grace, grace is constantly encouraging you. And it says, let it encourage your heart. Let it give you hope, God hope. Let it strengthen you for every good word and every good deed. So we need grace to come upon us. What Christ has done to do that, you know, do your destiny. Some are called to be in government. Some are called to be Boy, we to use work in, government? in oh school. God. School. Some are called to to build their own business and and uh, in many different ways. And that's their anointing. That's their call. But. God, whatever your hands touch when you meditate day and night on what the Word of God, you make that business prosperous and successful. You make the 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 the, the ministry you've been called to do. You make that prosperous and successful because the Word and you are in agreement. We're one together, and boom, the power of the Holy Ghost goes forth, and God gives you ideas. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the one last one okay. in the overtime. We're going to get it in. Oh my God. Attitude is the library memories of your past. It's the speaker of your present. You're where you're at by what you said and what you believe. And it is the prophet of your tomorrow. You're already prophesying what tomorrow is going to be like yeah. by the words of your mouth. So you might as well turn them into words that are going to produce good ahead of you, create the best life, create wealth, create the pop building of the kingdom instead of letting negative things come out of your mouth and, and keep yourself where you're at in the present. And then tomorrow is your present and the next day is your present and the next day is your present. Why not make tomorrow better by what you say today? But let's just take a moment. If there's someone out there that does not know Christ Jesus, the Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity Amen. to receive Amen. now. Amen. God wishes that none should perish, Amen. but all should come to the saving knowledge Amen. of Christ. Would you reach out for Jesus? Pray this prayer with me right now. Repeat after me. Dear Father God, dear Father I ask God, you to forgive me of all I of my sin. Of I ask you, sin. dear Jesus, come into dear my Jesus, life, come into my heart, come into my be life. my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name, and then tell somebody you receive Amen. the Lord. Call us and let us know. Thanks for being with you with you with us and we will see you next time.